Designer Notes, Subject 48. Originality is hard to come by. To the public eye, it is very much sought after and one of the top criteria of what makes a product great. To the design world, it's a rare and precious commodity that even the brightest minds spend a lifetime mining even an ounce of it. The BR05 collection from Bell & Ross certainly needs an ounce or two of this magic ingredient. But despite the lack of such, this collection is one of the best-selling watches for Bell & Ross. So what gives? Bell & Ross was originally manufactured together with Zinn until it broke away on its own in 2005. Bruno Bellamic and Carlos Rosilio, hence the name Bell & Ross, built the company around professional tool watches that resembles military cockpit gauges. The idea looked original back in the day. It was fresh, instantly recognizable. If Panerai benefited with being associated with an action star wearing their watches all the time, Bell & Ross certainly did the same by being popularized by and with aircraft instruments. Fifteen years later, the allure of what made Bell & Ross sellable is wearing off. The company needed to adapt, and with the influx of younger watch enthusiasts with a totally different taste, the BR05 collection was conceived. Like, comment, and subscribe for content you'd like to see next. Follow us on Instagram at Design Atelier Aruba for behind-the-scenes content. Submit your pics and videos to designatelierviewer at gmail.com. Let's talk about the ever-so-important dimensions of the VR05. Case width is 40mm with a lug-to-lug -lug span of 47mm. The thickness is 10.5mm, which puts this relatively tame compared to other massive watches today. With the integrated bracelet, we're not gonna bother measuring the lug width, and we doubt that there will be any aftermarket replacements for the bracelet anyway. Despite what many watch reviews are saying that this is not a big watch, the large gap between the bracelet width and the case width projects larger proportions visually. The circumference of the dial within the square case adds to the large feeling of the watch as well. These corners where the screws are creates a large negative space that visually makes the dial smaller. This, of course, is intentional. Carlos Rocio, in an interview with Revolution, stated that they wanted to keep the DNA of the BR series. The circle in square design language must be recognizable in this new collection. Flight instruments at the time were deliberately designed with the swappability in mind. It's easier to make various gauges if all of them use the same square dimension and bolted on to the cockpit with the same four screws. This was what inspired Bell & Ross and this is still present in the VR05 collection. These screws are somewhat functional as they hold the bezel to the case. The back also has these screws, but it's left to be seen if this fully extends to the front of the watch. Speaking of the bezel, it's now a squarish shape with a circular cutout for the dial. This is a departure from the BR watch series we've come to know from Bell & Ross, which sports circular bezels apart from the screws of the case. The bezel is chamfered diagonally in the same line as the case and lug angle. There are varying finishes between the chamfer and case surfaces, providing an attractive contrast from all sides. There are crown guards on this one compared to the BR watches that lack this feature. Though the dial may not say it, the BR05 is water resistant to 100 meters with a crown being screwed down to provide this protection. But not only did Bell & Ross continue with the VR design language, they also used other design cues elsewhere such as their Hydromax Diver. The bracelet uses this visual profile despite looking like another bracelet from another popular timepiece. Looking at this dial, the clear Bell & Ross identity is felt with the numerals and hour markers making for familiar signature elements. 
There are no minute markers here and the numerals share the same space with the hour markers. These hour markers are applied indexes compared to printed markers on the other BR dials. The date window is at the 3 o'clock position, which is also pleasantly dressed with a polished applied window. The loom is decently applied in each indices, formulated with Super Luminova. The hands used here were clearly different from what we have been used to seeing from Bell & Ross. Gone are the thick aviation style hands and replaced with a more contemporary looking set of hands. The dial is sunray brushed, which plays with light elegantly. It's really meant to evoke an emotion rather than aid in legibility. It is clean and readable nonetheless. Rounding out the dial is the Bell & Ross branding that, in my opinion, is too big in proportion. But then again, it was an established proportion from the other watches in the BR series. If I had my way and tweaked the proportions, however, it wouldn't look like a BR series watch, isn't it? While many would focus on the dial, the bracelet used on the BR05 is a legitimate must-see in-person attraction. Many videos and images online does give everyone a decent approximation of what this bracelet can offer, but it does not prepare you for the stunningly gorgeous finish of this bracelet. After handling the watch in person at a local AD, I can honestly say that this is the BR05's strongest selling point. GNF Chatelain expertly manufactures and finishes the watch cases for Bell & Ross and Chanel. It's a treat to be seen in person, suffice to say. The lugs stoop down at a 15 degree angle that helps with the wearability of the watch while homaging a very famous case design. More on that later. The dual deployment clasp is rock solid and you need to press both buttons to release the bracelet. The rest of the bracelet is well made with minimal to no bending around the sides. It's clear that most of the cost of this watch went to the engineering and finishing of the case and bracelet which makes this ideal for its price point. We had to mention that beforehand because the movement in the VR05 is a caliber BR321. It's based from the Celita SW300-1 movement with a few modifications. It has a longer power reserve at 40 to 42 hours with a higher quality assembly for the balance and hairspring. It has 25 joules and beats at 28,000 beats per hour. This sandblasted nickel finish creates a more unique vibe to an otherwise widely used movement. The rotor is skeletonized with its lattices resembling an automotive aesthetics more than the aviation theme. Having this seemingly unremarkable movement, many might do a double take rather than buying the skeletonized version. Would you spend a premium to gaze at a rather common movement? Many people would certainly not. The BR05 is offered in multiple dial colors in a stainless steel case that's either on a bracelet or strap. There are gold and skeletonized versions that can be bought at a totally different price point. Recently, Bell & Ross expanded the options for the collection by adding a chronograph version that comes in black or blue dials, the BR05 Chrono. These new chronographs add a little bit more functionality and visual interest while maintaining the VR05 aesthetics. The case overall gained 2mm from 40 to 42mm. It's assumed that the previous lug-to-lug -lug span of 47mm is also expanded to 49 with the new case expansion. The thickness is also expected to be bigger at about 30mm to accommodate the automatic chronograph. When put beside each other, the heft is clearly seen. But with the stooping lug design, the chronograph will still wear modestly on the wrist. Just bear in mind that with the increased lug-to-lug -lug length, this may be too much for 16cm wrists. From the sides, the remnants of the crown guard screws are still there, but now holding the chronograph pushers. These pushers occupies a lot of real estate and is easy enough to activate. The dial provides a lot of changes from the BR053 hander. The chapter ring now has seconds markers in 5 second intervals. Within the dial, the seconds gradations were added between the hour markers. 
Each second is divided into fifths, making the chronograph truly useful down to the fifth of the second. The 3 and 9 o'clock markers are now replaced with subdials. The 9 o'clock subdial sports the 30 minute counter with the 3 o'clock utilizing the running seconds function. These subdials are framed with a light colored graded ring while the subdial itself is textured. The blue dial version has a different tone dial compared to the black dial version. Overall, the integration of the chronograph on the VR05 seems to be a more natural progression compared to the VR05 was to the VR watches. All the gradations are here without breaking the design language. Soft curves were added by the subdials, but they didn't take away from the chronograph function. The date complication is positioned in between the 4 and 5 o'clock position, and this is the biggest complaint that I have against this watch. Regulars of the channel would surely point out that I like my dates at 6. I think the designers tried to hide this behind the thinner numerals and circular frame, which is admirable but still annoying for some of us. There's some added text to the 6 o'clock position, namely the chronograph and 100M. The chronograph text is understandable, but the 100M not being present in the three-hander is a thinly bailed attempt to make the dial busier by adding it here. In a way, by adding more detail on the dial, the dial is more cohesive. It's deliberately assuring you that this is a functional tool watch. The BR Caliber 301 movement is Bell Ross take on the ETA 2894 2, which is an automatic chronograph movement with a 42 hour power reserve. This one is perlage decorated compared to the sandblasted finish of the VR321 while sporting 37 jewels. The downside of this movement is truly creating more heft on the watch altogether. For a sports chronograph today, it's desirable for a chronograph to slip under cuffs. The R05 would feel more like a squeeze than a slip. At retail, the VR05 starts at $4,900. Online, you can get a new piece at a significant discount and pre-owned examples cost even less. The chronograph grows for $6,400 on the steel band and $5,900 on the rubber strap. All of these versions are available at most ADs and online stores. It's an attractive value proposition that Bell & Ross is placing itself on the sports luxury watch segment. With all of that being said so far, we have to address all of the burning issues that this collection has created since its release. Is it a clear homage of the Royal Oak and Nautilus? The straight answer is yes, it is. Many of the people saying that it is unoriginal and homaging popular sports watches are actually right, regardless of whether they are saying it out of hate or in an educated observation. Carlos Rosillo himself literally said in the same interview with Revolution that the VR05 was really intended to evoke the 1970s sports watch because that's the design category that they are aiming for, an urban instrument is a conscious decision to separate itself from flight dashboards that the company is known for. It does this by taking inspiration on the aesthetics the urban folks are looking for in a modern sports watch. The case in bezel clearly takes cues from the Royal Oak with its bezel, chamfer, and integration of screws. The lug angles are also reminiscent of the Royal Oak's lug design. The bracelet with its polished center links also looks very similar to that of the Patek Philippe Nautilus. The VR05 is not the only watch guilty of this. The numerals bear a striking resemblance with that of Panerai, but then again the other VR watches all sport this same typeface. It's a common theme that Bell & Ross does not need Panerai for inspiration. The chronograph version also bears a striking similarity with some vintage Zenit chronographs. It's a tried and true chronograph design that appeals to many. When sat beside a Patek chronograph, the pushers are nearly a spitting image of that of the Nautilus. The Nautilus, however, is a lot thinner, which, of course, you would pay many folds over for the price of the VR05. 
The VR05 is a collection aimed for the younger discerning watch enthusiasts. It hits the right marks of what is popular and appealing. Integrated bracelet? Check. Chamfered edges? Check. Blue dial? Check that too. Unoriginal? Definite check. But despite the rationale, originality wasn't really needed for the VR05 to become a success for Bell & Ross. The company sought out a market, took all the things that that market loved, and made it available. And it worked. Originality not needed. Bon dia, bon tardi, bon noche. We have a comment from a local viewer, IMAX. Very nice video, thank you, IMAX. The Cassius Baby G Pokemon 25th anniversary would be a nice one to see. Keep up with the great work and nice editing and graphics design. Thank you so much once again, IMAX, for your support of the channel. And yes, we would like to see more um, G-Shock videos, especially the Baby G. We haven't featured the Baby G as of yet, but we will definitely feature uh, Baby G's uh, the next uh, few videos, especially the Pokemon um, 25th anniversary. Pokemon holds um, something dear to our hearts and to many uh, fans for sure, but so far only one collaboration with G-Shock is uh, available in the, in the market. But there are, I have seen other promotional campaigns where they take colorways of popular G-Shock and fit them together with similar Pokemon. And that's something that maybe we could play around with. But more importantly, we will feature more baby G-Shocks in, in the, the next few videos. So we're going to put that on the list. Uh, watch out for that. Ratfish09 commented, what would you lean towards if you had to choose between the Doxa Sub 300 and the current Doxa Sub 300T? Is the Dome Crystal and COSC ETA worth the extra money to you, do you think? Well, if you're asking me personally, yes, it's worth the extra money. One, because I'm leaning towards the vintage aesthetics. I love those Dome Crystals, those aluminum bezels, the brush finish on, on the monoblock cases, I love those. The COSC certification, to me, is not a deal breaker. I've handled watches without such certification. They can also maintain accuracy almost or even within the COSC uh, standards. But having a certification to a diving equipment or to any equipment uh, in general, means something to the user because it means that they have the confidence that this equipment is tested for high standards of such renowned institutions. And that's something that we can apply to the Doxa Sub 300T. Now, you may not need it because with all of the more advanced equipment that you, you can have, such as diving computers, but Let's be honest here, we don't really buy our watches to be used as accurate equipment. We buy these watches and collect them because they're conversation pieces, because they're something that uh, provokes or ev evokes an emotion from us or triggers a nostalgic feeling. It's something that we as a collector feel, not think about. Know? And to me, the 300T is a far superior uh, piece compared to the 300. So yes, I would be willing to fork out that extra money. But thank you so much for tuning in for the video. Like, comment, and subscribe for content that you'd like to see next. Follow us on Instagram at Design Atelier Aruba for behind the scenes content that you don't normally see in this channel. If you want to submit your pictures and videos of you or your, your watches, just submit it to designatelierviewer at gmail.com. So until then, have a pleasant month.